One of the most common challenges of photography is dealing with scenes that are both too bright and then ironically enough, too dark somewhere else in the same frame. That is, they have a wide dynamic range and it's a common challenge with real estate interiors like this, landscape, and ultimately any image where you're shooting in beautiful dramatic light. So in this tutorial, you'll learn how to blend multiple different exposures through the use of luminosity masks so you can bring forth the best highlights, midtones, and shadows across the whole image to create a beautiful finished image. And we're going to go way beyond just the blending in this tutorial. So strap in. It's going to be a fast and fun edit. But before we begin, I want to quickly acknowledge photographer Gary Gomez, who provided the images for this tutorial. I don't tend to shoot a lot of interiors myself. So thank you, Gary, for sharing these with us. And in addition to being an amazing photographer, Gary's also an instructor himself. So be sure to check out the link below to see more of his work as well as his tutorials on real estate interiors. So let's go ahead and get started now. And if we take a look at the edge of this counter here, Notice from one frame to the next, there's a little bit of misalignment, which we have to deal with. And that's why I've imported things as rasterized layers instead of smart objects, because unfortunately, Photoshop will not allow us to align smart objects. But all we need to do is click on the pre-blend button in Lumenzia, and we want to make sure we check the alignment button, which will deal with that for us. And I've chosen to crop transparent edges because some pixels on the edge are going to be existent for only certain frames once we align things. So I'm just going to crop any area where they're not all available. That'll clean up the edges nicely. Go ahead and blend the layers. Let's zoom in and just double check our results here. And everything looks like it's in pixel perfect registration. So we're good to go. And we just need to figure out the basis of our image. I don't think the foundation should be this window view because it doesn't cover most of the image. So we can hide that. The midtones seem really pretty good in most of the image. And I think that should be the foundation. We have these two other exposures here. These brighter exposures for shadow details are nearly the same, with the key difference being this wood pile. We need to combine them together. There just wasn't enough wood for Gary to shoot everything in one shot. So we can treat these like one exposure by shift clicking to select both, hit Command G to group them, and we'll come back and deal with them in a moment. But let's begin by blending in this highlight detail because the windows are what tend to give people the most problems. So what we want here is to begin by hiding everything. We give it a black layer mask by alt-clicking on Mask and Lumenzia. And now that we've concealed everything because black conceals, we can paint white to reveal this area. And what we need is a selection that will give us the precision to do so with really nice edges. That's the key. And we could go and click for a light selection in Lumenzia, which would give us those window areas. But it's also picking up things like the stairs, the wood here, the floor. I just want the windows. And so what I want to do is combine this with an active selection, and then Lomenzi will just work with the windows. So let's create that selection real quick by hitting W for a quick select. And then I can click and drag through this window to try and pick up this whole window pane. And of course, these edges are hard. They're rough. They're not perfect. But when we combine it with Lomenzia, it's going to soften everything up and give us a nice result. So let's hold on Shift so we can keep clicking the other window areas. And we're just going to pick up all these window areas and we'll make one master selection of all the window areas in one go. So just nice and quick and easy. And as I work here, I notice these windows are kind of jumping around a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and bring in these vertical parts because the luminosity is going to deal with that. But I don't want things like these brighter floor areas. So I'm going to alt click and drag to remove them and come back one time. I want to make sure I do have the bottom here. So just excluding the floor from that area. So that looks like that should be pretty good. It's, it's rough, but it'll look really nice when we're done. And we need these windows. So let's shift, click, and drag here and here to make sure we have all that area included. And I think that's going to do nicely for us. So now we need to load that as our selection. And we need to get the luminosity involved. So let's go click on L for our lights 1.5 preview, which looks pretty good. But I think we'll get better separation from the darker frame. If we shift click this mask, now it's visible and the preview is working from this darker version of the image. So that's looking pretty good other than these areas are pretty dark. And the darker it is, the less selected it is. And the less selected it is, the more you have to brush. I don't want to brush a whole bunch here. I want to brighten this up. We can go into these orange preview layers that Lomenzia created. They're just temporary layers for visualization. And we can make adjustments to our preview and it's a WYSIWYG process. So what you see is what you get. And this would be the selection we'd get, which is much more selected here. But I don't want to select these interior areas here. So I can bring in the black point and kind of knock them out. So now we're going to have a nice selection of the areas inside these marching ants. And all we have to do is click on Cell and Lumenzia to load that combined result, choosing to feather them with just a couple pixel radius. We'll say OK. 
and we now have an active selection. We know it because we have the green cell button, but it'd be nice to understand what we're working with. So if we click on check cell, we can see here is that combined result that I mentioned where it's inside the window frames using the luminosity. So you're gonna have a nice clean edge of these areas. Click on check cell again to reload that as our active selection. And we see it's green again, so we know it's active. Now we can click on our mask to make it active, hitting B for our brush and just using a large white soft brush with high opacity and lower flow. Now we can brush in these areas and I'm just gonna hit them pretty quick and rough to get my mask started. I need a little something to work with. Then I'm gonna switch over to a split screen view that will let me see not just the blended image, but the mask itself, because that can reveal any little quality mistakes that I make. And there are gonna be a lot of them. When we go and click on split, we'll now see the mask on the left and the blended result on the right. And you can see, for example, I've got this big hole in the middle of this window that it's brighter here, but it's subtle it's hard to see. And just by having this here, now I can see the areas I need to work on. So that just gives me a better ability to find quality issues by looking at the mask. And at the same time, every time I let go, I see the preview updating on the right. So I see the actual result and I see the quality issues of the mask. So that's why I like this split screen view. Give me an ability to work really quickly and accurately. And my goal here is to try and not have too much gray in these middle areas. That'll give me a little better result. And like I said, this is a quick edit here. I am going very fast through this. And if you want to slow things down, take more time, I definitely recommend checking out my Exposure Blending Master Course where I not only give you the raw files to work with, but also go through all of this sort of technique in much, much greater detail with written segments and quizzes and hours of video so you can take things at your pace. But I want to give you a sense of how this works and I've had a lot of requests for a more detailed tutorial like this. Let's go ahead and close this view of the mask and see how we did from before to after. It's looking really nice. It's improved quite a bit. And if we zoom in, let's just check our edges and make sure we don't have any sort of halos or other problems at the edge of the windows. And things look really good with the exception that this piece of concrete here I didn't blend this in, so this is a little brighter than this, and I'd like to fix that. So let's hit Command or Control D to deselect, create a new selection, and I'm just gonna make it more restrictive until it's only the concrete that's selected. I don't need a secondary selection. This ought to do it, maybe right around four and a half or so. So we'll load that as our selection. Hitting B for my brush again, shrink it down, and now I can just brush in these areas of the concrete, which it's a subtle improvement, but these are the little details that can really help an image. So at this point I can deselect and I'd say we've recovered the highlights and we're ready now to start working on the shadow detail. And the shadow detail, there's a lot of things going on here. The first thing we need to do is make sure we can actually see all the wood. So we've got these two exposures and one is blocking the other. I think the exposure that shows the wood on the right overall, I like a little bit better the way the light hits everything. So I'm gonna drag the left pile to the top and we'll blend it in. And all we have to do is Alt-click on mask to give it a black mask. Let's zoom in here and we're gonna paint white to reveal that wood that's now concealed by the black. Now the key is how do we paint on this without painting on the counter or the paint because these are not exactly the same exposure, the subtle differences. So I like to have a little more precision and I can do that by working with the fact that these have color whereas the counter does not and it's a different color from the wall. So just go click on color in Lumenzia. Reds, yellows, and greens ought to be great, not only for the wood, but this plant. So we can do a lot of work with one selection. We'll click on that selection. And with that active, we now have targeted these areas, which we can see by clicking on check cell. So you see there's our active selection. Reload it. Click on our mask to make it active, hitting B for our brush. We can now paint in the wood perfectly, just a few different brush strokes. Make sure the edges look good. And then we can check and see if any of the interior areas are off because there might be parts of this wood pile that are not exactly red or yellow enough to be picked up. And all we need the selection for is to make sure we don't paint over the edges. So if we shift click this, we can see there's a little bit more detail in the wood. And if I just hit Command or Control D to deselect, now I'm painting freehand. I wanna be very careful around edges, but as long as I stay away from the edge, I can paint in these middle areas and just pick up any lost detail that the selection didn't sufficiently include. And that's looking really good. So I think we've got that ready to go. And what I wanna do now is put a black mask on the group 
as we normally would do like a single layer. So this is now treated like one layer. So I'll click on mask and that's masked it out. But one problem is it's rehidden this layer because it needs to be visible on the layer and on the group. And in this case, it doesn't exist down below. So this group, you know, the, the wood was not showing down below. So I want to show it in this group by default. So no matter how I blend it, it is visible in the image. And the easiest way to do that is just to duplicate this layer. If I hold on alt or option and drag it up top, now I've copied it. And so it's visible in the group and the layer. And so it's always visible in this image. Now, of course, it's a little bit brighter than the other wood pile. So let's lighten up this, this wood and this plant. We can do all that with the same selection by just clicking on color once again, load up our reds, yellows, and greens. And now we can just close the group because we're only working the group mask. With the group mask active, hitting B for our brush, a little bit bigger with white, paint through that color-based selection. And now you can see we nicely reveal these other areas, including a subtle improvement of this plant to make it just a little more dimensional. And with that, we see from before to after, we're nicely improving those interior details. Now there's a bunch of other things I'd like to do with this, including working on the back of the hallway, these chairs could be a little more lively, the ceiling, and definitely the paint around this TV to help the TV separate from its background. I think each of these is probably going to require a different selection. So let's hit Command D to deselect, and we'll just go through them one at a time. Actually, I should have used that same selection for the table. So let's finish that. I'm just going to reload it. And with the table now, I can just brush this area and you see it just livens up that table a little bit. So let's deselect that. And now let's work on this chair which I can pick the chair exactly by going to click on the zone picker and then just clicking on the chair to pick up that color to target. And you see it's picking up that luminosity. Now it's also picking up the cabin tree, which I don't necessarily want to hit. So I can go and adjust the color targeting in my preview and just reduce the inclusion of the blues and cyans, give a little bit more separation. And then I can make it more selective to these specific tones by bringing down the precision slider, something like there gives me a nice separation of chair from background. So let's load that as our selection, hitting B for our brush. Now I can brush in these areas and I'm revealing the brighter exposure, but what I'm effectively doing is dodging and burning because all I'm doing are brightening pixels. The fact that I'm not using a dodge burn layer and I'm doing it instead through a brighter exposure, doesn't really matter. It's the same result, but it gives this chair a much nicer feel that way. So now let's go work on the back of this hallway. We'll zoom in here and we need a new selection. So we'll hit Command D to deselect L for a lights 1.5 preview. I think that's pretty good, although I want it to be stronger. So let's go open up the levels adjustment and just bring in the white clipping so that we have a little bit more ability to really hit these areas with our selection. So we're not just brushing all day long. Load that as a selection with the cell button. B for my brush once again, maybe a little bit smaller brush and brush over this chair and the floor to make, make it feel like there's some light coming through these areas. Now I, I switched over to gray paint, so I hit D again, make sure I'm on white. There we go, now we got a better ability to let that light through. And one key here is using a consistent brush stroke so that I'm not creating an unevenness on this wall because a solid wall like that will really show any unevenness in your brushing technique. So that's looking pretty good and while I like that, I probably want to go even further, but I don't think that layer has a whole lot more to give. So I'll come back later and brighten it with a secondary adjustment. So let's keep adding light to the room. I want to add a little bit of light to the ceiling. Let's hit Command D to deselect, L for a light selection, and make it a little more restrictive to the wood paneling, maybe around lights too, something like that. Looks pretty good. And uh, again, make it a bit stronger so I can work quickly hitting cell to load that as my selection and using a larger brush, just brushing these areas, which gives this appearance of a bit of light streaming into the room where it's going to brighten up the ceiling as well from before to after. See that lightens things up and I'm going to take that down just a bit. If I hit the fade slider in Lumenzia, I can brush that back and now I'm going to hit it a second time a little bit more broadly and just kind of combine a couple of different approaches there to lighten that area up. So this fade lets you dial in exactly the amount you want. Something like that is looking pretty good to me. Maybe a little bit less even like that. 
Now I think we're ready to tackle, uh, let's say this counter could be livened up a bit. It's kind of dark, should be fairly easy to hit it. We just need something that's bright. So let's deselect with Command D, LFR light selection. And once again, going to help target these areas, we can go and make the color maybe a little bit more targeted by having less of the yellows and reds. And I don't know if the cyans are gonna help or not because and it's not really affecting this cabinet too much and the blues are in the marble as well. So that's okay. We've already got preference here. We'll just be careful of the brushing technique around this, but let's go ahead and brighten this up a little bit. Let's bring in our white point and load that as a selection. Hitting B for our brush. Make it a little bit more targeted with a smaller brush so we don't have too much overspray and just brush right along the areas of this cabinet, or I'm sorry, the marble on top here. And that is looking much more appealing and interesting there. So now I think we can move to the wall paint. And this is a bit trickier. We want to pick things that are dark, but not necessarily black. I don't really want to lighten up the TV too much or areas like the cavity behind the wood, just these darker midtones. And this is where a subtracted selection can work really well. So let's hit Command D to deselect. We'll start clean. And what we do is click on D for a dark selection, maybe something around like darks three, darks three and a half. That gives us targeting towards these darker areas. There's some spillover here and here, which we can eliminate in a moment, but that's pretty good. And then we can knock out areas like, see how bright this is. We don't really want to fill in this cavity. We want to let the black stay black. So we're going to subtract that from this by loading this as a selection and then double click the minus button here in the Menzia, which will give us a subtracted selection. So now we've subtracted darks five automatically from our roughly darks three uh, selection there. So that's knocking out these areas of black. So it's preferential more to these midtone areas. But like I said, I want to remove the area of ceiling and wall just to be extra careful. And I can do that by hitting M from a rectangular marquee, holding down the option key. And now when I drag this, it will subtract this out of that area. So I can do that. And I can do something like that. So those two areas are now removed. And now we're just going to be painting on this wall, hitting B for our brush, go a little bit bigger and start brushing these areas. And of course the top is not getting that much light to begin with and the bottom's getting more. So I need to paint a little bit unevenly, but you can see how that's filling in these areas here and something like that. And then maybe just fade that back a bit so I can just approach things gently. And I'm gonna hit the top again a little bit more, try and be thoughtful about being even to the tones of this back wall as I do this. And something like that, I can maybe fade it back a little bit. And then we'll just see how that looks here. Just kind of livening that up, maybe brushing this area a little bit over here. Fade that back, bring in that a little bit, and then maybe even just come in with a black brush and just knock a little bit of that down to just try and even out those tones there. So that's looking pretty good there from before to after. And if I was doing this for a professional job, I'd spend a little more time to keep evening out that wall. I think it's a little bit off, but generally looking pretty good. And I think the general point has been illustrated there. So now let's move on to the next things, which is to brighten up the back of this hallway. And like I said, we've already extracted a lot from this layer. So let's create a new layer to deal with this. We'll hit Command D to deselect, go click on a brightness contrast layer here and bring up the brightness. We can just directly increase the brightness. And now what we'll do is paint through another luminosity selection. So Alt click on mask to highlight, hide everything, conceal everything. Click on L for our lights 1.5 preview. And once again, probably strengthen it up a little bit and then load that as a selection B for our brush. And we're going to paint on it. Same approach we took before, but instead of revealing the underlying exposure, the underlying pixel layer, we have an adjustment layer that's taking what's already there and making it even brighter. So something like that. And let's just see how that did. I think that's looking pretty good, but I'm going to zoom back and just look at the overall appearance there. Maybe knock that down a little bit so I can just open it up and take the brightness back. The key with this is always that you're making an adjustment and then you're revealing it through a luminosity selection. So you can always go back and change your adjustment as you see fit there. 
So that looks pretty good. Next up, the reflections in this TV I find distracting as seen with this oven here, this blue light. So let's take care of those. And what we should do is just black them out. I think uh, hitting Command D to deselect, going down and grabbing a solid color layer, we can just simply drop black right over it. And of course, what we want to start with is a black mask so we can invert this. I can just go click on my mask. And there we go, invert it. And we need to paint black in these areas. We don't need a luminosity selection. A simple polygonal lasso ought to do the trick here. So I can go click on this polygonal lasso tool and zoom in a little bit further so I can really see the corner points here. You can hit Command H to hide those distracting grids if you see them and just click. Oh, we gotta click to start the selection then just drag down. And we're just gonna go from one corner to the next here. And if we don't get this perfect, we can refine the edges a little bit, but my guess is it's gonna look really good right from the get-go. Key being that we zoomed in so we could really see the detail. You're, you're never gonna get this kind of precision if you don't zoom in to really take care with it. But once you do that, it's a pretty easy process. And we just kind of close that. And with that now we can zoom back and hitting B for our brush with white paint, just paint right in here to help reveal that adjustment. All right, so we're just literally painting black right over it. We can zoom in, I can hit Command H to hide my ants. Hitting B for my brush and just looking for any areas that I may wanna push a little bit further. And my goal is not to make the TV perfectly black. That wouldn't feel right. I wanna have a little bit of reflection. So what we can do here is just simply dial back the opacity of this layer. So there's a little bit of reflection. It makes it feel like it really belongs in the room without being too strong. And now we'll do the same thing on this oven. So we'll zoom in here, hitting L, doing the same quick and dirty protection, not nearly as tough here. B for my brush, hiding my ants there. And now just brush right over this to knock out this blue. And of course I've got partial opacity, so it comes through a little bit, but I think it's fine to have just a bit of that. You really won't even see it when it's zoomed back. But those little corrections really improve the image. Next, I want to get rid of these distractions of the image. We've got these little pieces that I don't like. So let's go in here and hitting L for our lasso. And I'm going to use a regular lasso, not the polygonal one. Just select these areas. And then we're going to content aware fill them using the basics panel, which will automatically help deal with all this stuff on a new layer for us. So really nice and clean. Even if you're working with smart objects, you can use this approach. And I should have been holding shift. So let's go back. I need to add. If you don't hold shift, then you're going to get new selection instead of adding to the selection. So common mistake. Make sure you see that little plus in the cursor, and then you're good to go. So we've got all three selected. Let's zoom back. We see all of them with the marching ants. Click on fill in the basics panel. You want to choose to sample all layers with content aware fill. Say OK. And I need to click off of my filter mask and do this again and it's going to let me customize the result but i don't need to i'll just say okay that's going to work great and hit command d to deselect and we've now removed those distractions very nicely from the image we have a much better looking result and look at things over i got a few things left to do i think i overdid it on these windows they're a bit too dark and conversely i think this area needs to be brighter i just want to lighten up the room and then also this little lighting fixture towards the edge Let's remove that. I should have content where filled that away as well. So let's go fill that. And that's easy enough to do. It does give me a second content where fill layer. If you want to tidy things up, you can shift click, then right click and merge the two layers. So now it's just one layer for all the filling. For these windows, remember we did it on a separate layer with its own mask, which is why we have a non-destructive workflow. We can go back in hitting B for my brush, paint black on that layer mask and remove the darkening layer on these windows. Now my goal is not to remove it entirely like I am doing at the moment, but to remove it so I can go to the fade slider in the basics panel and then get the exact amount I want. And that feels more balanced to me. Let's try it right in there, it feels about right. And then over in here to lighten this area, I'm gonna go click for a new brightness contrast adjustment, bring that way up maybe around 80%. And while it looks great on these walls and that's the only area that I need to paint in, I do want to note that the fill in these other areas here is showing through because the brightness contrast layer is below it. And if I bring it above, 
that will make sure everything's nice and even, which is important if you were gonna blend these areas. So it's kind of a best practice. I'm gonna alt click on mask for black mask, and now I'm ready to paint as soon as I have a selection for the areas which are dark, but not too dark. So once again, I need a subtracted selection, but also one that's not gonna hit this ceiling, which is gonna be something we'll have to guard against. So let's go click on D for our darks, bring it down until we kind of eliminate the ceiling. At this point, I think we can knock it out by color because remember that this is a red yellow color. So if we go into the color portion of the preview, we can just simply knock out the reds and the yellows and things look really good. This little board over here, what's going on there is this window lights being cast up onto the ceiling and it's not lighting the area nearest the wall. So it actually is darker and I don't mind brightening it up. So I think that's fine. Let's hit W for our quick select and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of protection here because what I don't wanna do is end up accidentally painting down the hallway or on the chairs or the table or something in the foreground. Probably wouldn't, but just a nice you know, insurance for me. Click on cell to load that as my selection. Once again, feathering by two. And then we still need to remove these black areas. So if I double click the subtract button, Lemenzi is gonna automatically convert to a subtracted selection, which removes blacks. So now I'm ready to paint. I'm gonna to switch to white paint with my brush. Hitting B for my brush, sorry. And let's go and I'm just gonna kinda of overdo it on the first pass and back off and then do a second pass. Just kinda of give it one quick starter brushing here and then I can dial it in with the second brushing. So better to build things up in little bits rather than necessarily try and get it all perfect in one go. So let's dial that back. And then once again, come in and just lighten the areas that I think need to be lightened up a bit further. So something like that. And again, fade that back and let's just look from before and after on there. See how nicely that's lightened that up. It has brightened up a little bit of the face of the TV. Remember we darkened this down and while it's subtle, if you really wanna be perfect about this, we can knock this out of our mask. I don't really need it here. So what I can do for that is go back to this darkening layer we created. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect, so I have nothing selected, and its layer mask can be loaded as a selection, right? Because I can load this by Command or Control clicking on it, which makes it active, and now I go back to my new layer, hitting B for my brush, switching over to black paint, and I can brush that out. So it's a subtle fix, but why not? Let's get it right. So let's zoom back now, and the image is looking great. From before, we had all this extra brightness, it was dark down the hall, lots of distractions, reflections on the TV, and we've come to this finished image, which looks much, much better. So I think it's ready to output to social media. I'm gonna switch over to WebSharp Pro, and I wanna quickly demonstrate a couple areas in the newest panel. For the social media stuff like Facebook or Instagram and Pinterest, we no longer have a portrait and a landscape option, you just have a single option that says keep full image. So what it's doing is it is a smart template. It will adaptively output your image with the maximum area possible. So it'll output your full landscape or portrait if it can, but if cropping is necessary for the platform, then it will crop. So just choose Facebook. You don't have to worry about the details, which is really nice, especially for batch processing. And then in settings, a lot of you have been asking about the new blur feature. So to create a blur all the way around the image, just enable a border and then switch over to the blur option. I like to use the drop shadow, and in this case, I've got a 5% inside border. It's important that you use this inside keep dimensions options when you're working with something like Facebook so that you don't increase the size of the finished image. You want to keep it at the Facebook size. Let me shift click on sharpen, and this is going to go do all the things I need for social media, resizing, sharpening, adding the border, converting to sRGB, and let's see how we're looking. I think that looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and click save so I can upload to Facebook. And now watch this next video on exposure blending and be sure to check out the exposure blending master course to learn all about the process from start to finish in great detail.